Hey guys, it's Spirit Wars, and today I'm going to be doing a detailed ammo type review for the 109 in Cliffs of Dover. So when you are in your map or whatever it is, you go into your player plane, and you've selected your plane that you've wanted. Uh, for us, we're doing the 109. I'm going to go into the loadout. And in here, you can set your fuel. This is in your weapon sets, but we're going to go to guns. And once you go into your gun tab, you're now uh, greeted with this menu here. And what this is on the left-hand side of the screen is one of four. And what that is, is the different weapon weapons that you have. Uh, in the 109, you have four of them. You have two nose MGs, the 7.92 millimeter, which takes up slot one and slot two, one being the left hand side one, two being the right hand side one, and then you go into three and four, which is your cannon, your wing cannon, or in case of the E1 variant, the wing MGs. So three is the same as one, which is your left hand side, four is your right hand side. And this is your 20 mil cannon. So now let's take a look at the different shell types. So if you see on the right hand side, this is where your different uh, variations of your bullets are. Just above it, you have your horizontal and vertical convergence that you can set where your shells go. And you can actually uh, save and name your different presets that you choose by uh, adding, inserting, removing, and um, bringing these shells over into your actual main belt. And how you start afresh is you remove, you click in here, make sure you select it here, and you remove all the shells besides from one. It can't be empty. And then you choose the shells that you want to bring across by either adding or inserting and you can restore it to default by hitting the default button. You can also go into here, and this is your main uh, belt. You can also go into your residue belt when you're running out of ammo and have a different, let's say you choose a few tracer rounds to let you know that you are running out of ammo. Um, I don't really do that. I just uh, check the counter. So. Let's start off with the top round. The SMK round is just a standard AP shell. This shell is very good at taking out engines, uh, pilot killing, and also radiators. It's got high penetration value, but a very small uh, entry and exit hole. And so what this means is it's very good for shooting at the fuselage, but not very good at shooting at surfaces and wings because it doesn't really affect them too much. It leaves very small holes that doesn't affect the aerodynamics of the plane. I will show you now a quick clip of what this shell can do. see exactly what these shells are meant to do. Pinpoint accuracy for the oil on the left, water on the right, and also sending some shells right into the cockpit. You can see how small the actual bullet holes are. Um, very little damage is actually done to the plane. Now let's take a look at the second shell, the SMKH. This is the same as the SMK but just with a harder um, core. What this means is it has greater penetration than the standard SMK, but it has a smaller fragmentation effect, so it has an even smaller um, exit hole. So pretty much the best thing for this shell is to be aiming at the fuselage again and pinpointing where you're aiming. You want to be aiming for the engine, you want to be aiming for the pilot, you want to be aiming for vital things like the radiators. Because if you're hitting anywhere apart from there, 
you're not going to be doing anything with this shell because it's going to go right through and leave uh, virtually no hole in the plane and it's going to keep on flying until you hit it with something else. So let's take a look at what this shell can do. What you want to be doing with this type of shell is aiming for the vital things like the radiator, the oil radiator on the left, done, oil radiator on the right, done, pilot in the middle, come on aim, done. So this is what this uh, shell is best for. But now let's quickly take a look at the damage that it has done to the enemy plane. Nothing. No surface damage at all, it just goes right through the plane. So with these heart rounds, they're not very good at the wing as you'll see here. So I've just put a whole bunch of rounds into the wing. Now let's actually see what it's done. Virtually anything. There is, <clears throat> there is literally no damage to the wing. I shot that up for a long time. Now the two shells just below it are the standard SMK round with a tracer effect. The Elspur is a tracer um, and you have the top one gelb that is uh, gold or, or yellow and the bottom one is white. So I'm not going to show what these do um, you can just imagine. <laughs> so pretty much with the tracers, I used to take a lot of tracers because I thought, oh, it's fantastic. I can scare off an opponent um, that's on my friend six. I can see where I'm shooting and not miss. Um, but really, the more I've flown, the more I realize how incorrect that is in the fact that there's so many more disadvantages than advantages of having tracers in your loadout. For one, anybody within a close radius of you will see you when you shoot because of the bright yellow tracer or the white tracer um, spewing from your plane. Secondly, the person you're shooting at will know straight away um, that they're being shot at the second you miss. Shoot. If you shoot over their cockpit, they're going to see straight away. If you're shooting underneath, they might not see unless they see it um, below them, ahead of them. Um, but it really indicates that uh, and tells them that they're being fired on and gives them an opportunity to dodge. Um, so unless you're pinpoint accurate, unless you're hitting every time, don't use. In that case, you don't even need to use Tracer because you're hitting. You know how much lead to give. It all comes down to experience and, and knowing how much lead to give. If you are missing a lot, you don't know how much lead to give, get into a single player um, mission and um, throw in traces then and learn how much lead to give because when you're flying competitively, when you're flying in missions um, against real people, traces are not a very good um, use of ammo. You're just wasting ammo because what actually happens is you have less penetration than the standard because it's using some of the, uh, the mass of the shell to have the tracer element in it. And then I'll show you a quick video on why not to use tracers in your loadout. This is a video from a 64 pilot in the ACG uh, group. You can check out his channel. It's in the description. Subscribe. He makes great videos. Chapter 11, leader. Can I have your pitch week aircraft, please? Setting in start again. Hey, you got one on you. Break, break, break. Oh, shit. 
TP and the soccer copy. Is he running away or what? This one is. There's another one in the area, I think. I see Flack, yeah. Flack from the coast. Patty, how close to the deck are you? There's I'm one coming at me. So the Zerl round, this is one of my favorite rounds and my most highly recommended rounds that you use. It has um, your standard SMK uh, penetration, your AP penetration, um, with an explosive uh, effect to it. You obviously lose penetration um, to have this explosive effect, but it is fantastic. It, completely destroys rudders, ailerons, um, elevators, it, it rips them off, um, it destroys wings. After you've shot a, a Spitfire in the wing with a three second burst of these shells, you you look at it and you think that it's been hit by massive cannon shells. It's just ridiculous how much this uh, cripples planes. I got my first kill in ACG by having a lot of these in because I was flying an E1, so I just had a ton of these. And um, <clears throat> I got my kill by completely disabling all surface areas of a hurricane. I had three passes at him and crippled his rudder, his elevator, and um, ailerons. And there was nothing he could do. <laughs> it really is a fantastic shell. So let's take a look at what it can do now. a couple seconds last. Look at his wings. Looks like he got hit by a bloody ship cannon. Now that plane can't even turn well. It's not fast anymore. Two of the main attributes of the Spitfire gone. In a couple second burst. Look at that wing completely destroyed. That's from MGs. Pilot's dead and I wasn't even aiming at the cockpit. Wing is completely ruined. Take a look here at what these rounds do. Pilots killed, I wasn't even aiming at the cockpit. Rudder, wings, ailerons, and you heard how loud it was. So you can see it completely destroys planes, it's fantastic. And um, it is actually really good at pilot killing as well if you're shooting at the root of the wing of a plane. Uh, the fragmentation effect of this round uh, goes into the cockpit and and kills them as well so very good for that as well so with the Zerl you want to be aiming more for the wings more for the surface areas you can maybe start off by shooting the uh, rudder and uh, elevators of planes um, and then move into the wings if you have time if not shoot for the root of the wing and the wings of, of planes it's fantastic now moving on to the phosphor round. This is the same as your AP shell, but it has an incendiary uh, effect to it as well, lighting things on fire. So you lose penetration obviously to have that effect, uh, but it is quite good as well for pilot kills, for engine fires, um, for taking out radiators. It is also very good at destroying um, the weapon systems of enemy planes. If you're shooting them in the wing, it's quite good at destroying their weapon system as well. Um, but I would recommend shooting the fuselage with this shell more, um, unless you're taking advantage of the hurricane's fuel tank um, in the root of the wing. If you're shooting a hurricane in the root of the wing, um, you're going to be hitting this fuel tank and causing the whole 
plane to catch fire. Good thing about the phosphor is when you combine it with an AP shell, like the heart or the standard SMK, uh, it increases the effectiveness of setting things on fire because the AP shell penetrates the fuel tank or whatever you're wanting to hit and then the phosphor sets it on fire. Let's see what this phosphor round can do. With the phosphorus you want to be aiming at the radiators and also at the main fuselage because of their AP aspect, they both are gone. Oh, aim. Pilot's gone and also Whoa. Pretty sure there's an engine fire there as well. Yep, there is. So both radiators, pilot and engine fire, that's exactly what these rounds do. Okay, we've just put a whole bunch of rounds into that wing. Let's see. Nothing. Wing's fine. That's why you shoot the fuselage, not the wings. So what exactly is the exploit of the hurricane? Well, there's a fuel tank to either side of the wing, and when you send a few phosphor shells in there, it goes on fire pretty well. There we go. Done. <clears throat> that happens to either side. And if you look, pause it quickly, if you look here this is a damage panel and you can see a fuel tank leak small leak, large leak, fire. So that is what has happened and that's what these shells are pretty good at. The combination of an AP shell to penetrate the fuel tank more and then an, a phosphorus to ignite it um, works very well. Finally the B round. This is a training round that does uh, no damage but flashes upon impact. It's very good for training and and learning when you're hitting the plane uh, good for using it for lead. I specifically have all tracer and all training rounds in one of my specific um, single player missions that I made um, just to get good at learning lead and if I'm hitting and stuff like that. So that's pretty good but don't use it in a competitive scenario. So overall, what I recommend to put in your ammo belt um, is a lot of Zerl rounds, uh, combine it with Phosphor and one or two Heart, I would say. I wouldn't recommend using the SMK. There's no real point. Why use that when you can get better penetration with the Heart? Um, it pretty much is just better in every way. As you can see, what I have here is a heart before a phosphor round to um, try and puncture the fuel and then set it on fire with the phosphor or to pilot kill with that round. Generally, I have it at the start of um, my belt. What you can do is have maybe two or three heart, two or three phosphor, and then the rest, um, zerl or a mix of zerl and phosphor. Um, what that can do is gives you the opportunity of when you get the jump on a plane and you're on their six and they don't see you coming you can spray a burst right into that cockpit and pilot kill them or hit the engine with those um, heart and phosphor rounds that's quite good um, but when you start getting into a dogfight and turn fights and you're having to do deflection shooting which isn't as accurate as the previous scenario you're going to be needing to hit a lot with the Zerl rounds um, and what you can actually do is if you do have that setup where you have a lot of um, heart and phosphorus at the start you can do a quick spray to get them out and then have the Zerl set up for your next deflection shot. 
obviously it is hard without traces to tell which um, stage of your belt you're in um, so you could even have one tracer at the end of your belt to let you know that okay your next few shells are going to be your heart shells um, but I wouldn't do that because I wouldn't put the traces in. Now let's take a look at the cannon shells. So firstly you have the top one, same as your MG's, it is an AP shell. Once again very good at shooting the, the uh, fuselage of the plane, pilot killing and hitting radiators and taking out the engine. Other than that, not very good if you're shooting at wings and stuff. Doesn't do virtually any damage to it. Um, let's take a look at this now. What this is is a traceless shell that goes right through. Um, and so you want to be aiming at the cockpit. Otherwise, it's just going to go right through the plane. goes an engine fire. See when these shells are aimed well they're pretty effective but it is very hard otherwise they're just wasted. You saw how many shells it took before something like that could happen. So the thing with these shells is you have to be really point accurate with them otherwise you will waste a lot direct hit no damage is just going right through more hits no damage going right through undercarriage damage radiator more cannon hits, nothing. It's very surprising how much you have to hit before anything actually happens. Let's get up close and see if how much damage it's actually done to the plane itself. Virtually nothing. The plane looks very much intact after all of that. Virtually nothing. The next one below that is a phosphor shell and same as your MGs as well. Good for fuselage, good for taking out radiators, uh, pilot killing and also taking out the engine causing engine fires. If you're shooting at the tanks of a hurricane, very good at setting the whole thing on fire. Not fantastic at shooting wings. Better to shoot fuselage but it will take out the uh, the guns and ammo of enemy planes. Pilot's going to bail because that's what AI do. So we've got him right in the engine and you can see the start of a fire in the engine. Here we go, so you can see a shell has gone right into the cockpit, killing both the pilot and setting the engine on fire. This third round has a tracer element to it and it explodes upon impact and it sends a whole bunch of shrapnel uh, around after the explosion. So it's quite an effective round. Um, it does quite a lot of damage and combined with the Meningashoss it is quite an effective round. Let's see what it can do here. Okay, so these ones actually have an explosive property to it. Got 
cockpit damage. These ones are fairly good. So it seems like this type of shell might combine three properties. The tracer property, AP property, and oh, there goes his tail. And a fragment property as well. So this is quite a um, brutal shell as well. So you can see some hits into the rudder that's disabled it. Shot underneath, shot above. There is so much recoil, especially with the force feedback. See if I can get some more. Some shots into his wing that's taken off the aileron. Some more shots, cockpit damage. There goes the engine, more cockpit damage. Now the pilot kills soon. There's the pilot kill. Definitely has an explosive aspect to it. Man, the damage details in this game are very good. The next round, the fourth cannon round, also has a tracer aspect to it and also has a shrapnel effect to it, but doesn't explode. It says that it does here with the Mitzelega, but it actually doesn't really explode like the Minengashos or this third cannon shell. Um, it more, it looks more like an AP hit when you get a hit with this. It kind of, um, you see a sort of a flash when you hit with it, um, but it does le leave fairly large holes in the plane but it's not as effective as the third cannon shell or the Meningashos. Let's take a look what it can do now. For the fourth cannon shell. So that's gone through his wings. You can see it actually makes a uh, large holes. The fifth cannon shell has tracer element to it and it doesn't explode. It's like the AP shells um, but I found that it actually sets things on fire as well so even though it doesn't say it in the title it has a bit of a phosphor element to it so it's a tracer AP phosphor. Um, so let's take a look at it now.
And finally, let's take a look at the Meningoshoss Patrona. This round is extremely effective. Um, how it works is it penetrates the, the target and then explodes, um, ripping off large bits of metal and um, destroying surface areas and killing pilots as well. Um, so it works with a, a pressure wave um, compared to the shrapnel um, and frag kind of way that these ones here work but this one is very good um, it takes uh, tails off it rips wings off um, I would definitely put a lot of this in your loadout so let's take a look at what it can do So one of my favorite things about this shell is how much damage it actually causes um, when you're shooting it in the wings, not only to the surface of it, but you destroy uh, the ammo and the guns in the plane. Um, also when you're shooting the wings, the explosion actually kills the pilot as well, so you don't even need to be aiming at the cockpit to get pilot kills with this round, which is really nice. And you definitely see when you hit the person. The only problem with this shell is if you miss and you shoot above them, it explodes. I think it's after 800 meters, the, the shell actually explodes. Um, so it in a way does tell enemy pilots that you are shooting at them. But it's quite funny, some pilots will see the explosion ahead of them and if they don't know what it is, they actually get quite um, fixated on it and gives you another shot. So it can be really bad, it can be good, um, but this is a, a very good round. In my opinion, what you should take for your cannon uh, loadout would be a lot of meaning gashos, maybe um, one phosphor shell because it does have the penetration of an AP shell, a little bit less, but has um, the phosphorus so it does set things on fire, uh, for example if you're hitting hurricanes in their fuel tank or if you're just going straight through the cockpit into the engine um, of a Spitfire or any of those planes. It takes engines out really well, engine fires, um, kills the pilot really well. It's a, a good shell but if you're hitting in the wrong place, it doesn't do too much. That's why the Meningoshoss is so good. So I would have probably two-thirds Meningoshoss and one-third Phosphor or even mostly Meningoshoss and just one Phosphor. Um, if you really want to put a trace around in to help you not miss so many, I would put the third cannon uh, shell in 
that in my opinion is the most effective um, yeah so that is just my opinion you find out what works for you um, and in future videos I'm going to be doing a video on the convergence um, how to set that up and what the different convergences do and also a very important video how to judge distance with your gun sight so for example if a Spitfire uh, from wingtip to wingtip takes up your whole uh, scope your whole circle uh, reticle how far is that and I've got a, a formula that I've found that tells you it's just over 100 meters when that happens it uses the wingspan of the enemy plane and you do a formula and it gives you um, the distance of that plane and so what you can do with that is you can work out so here I've got my horizontal convergence at 200 for 200 meters it's just uh, halfway so if the Spitfire takes up half of my scope that's 200 meters or aroundabouts uh, but I'll be doing a more in detailed video on that so thanks for watching leave comments uh, below um, for anything you want to know further or maybe I missed something and yeah thank you it is uh, surface structures completely ruining wings I'm recording <laughs> I love you beautiful <laughs> oh. um, it has an explosion effect to it uh, that is fantastic at taking out rudders, elevators, ailerons, uh, surface areas it's really really good um, it leaves massive holes in wings like they've been hit with a cannon my baby's crying Alrighty, I'm back. I'm back, baby. <clears throat> oh, jeez. Oh, well, that's one way to take him out. <laughs> and the last round... Okay, you can go. <coughs> you going your sisters to feed the baby. Okay, I love you. I'll see you soon. Get out of here. Go on. Go. <laughs> see ya.